Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Plague Inc. Evolved with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome to the Weak-Minded, a scenario which keeps on popping up absolutely everywhere, and for some reason I keep on ignoring. So today, finally, I've caved in, and we're going to control the minds of the masses, or perhaps just utterly destroy them. One of the two. Either destroy their minds or destroy everything. It's not going to be good for humanity either way. So it's currently got four stars in the popular tab, and it sounds fairly interesting. It's the Nurax Worm, and it sounds quite like the Nurax Worm already, but hopefully it's going to have more options to destroy them in a more interesting and unique way. Since normally with the Nurax Worm, you go down the route of mind control, this time we're going to try and just destroy everything. After archaeological excavations in Central Africa, a parasite that infected the human's minds thousands of years ago got released, and it wants to control us again. But it has a problem. Today's human's minds are too strong and too big for it to handle. Will it try to make the humans dumber in order to be able to take over them again? Or... Will it try to adapt to the human's minds with the danger of having some unwanted consequences? It has custom transmissions, symptoms, abilities, two different paths, custom events, and a story. So we are going to go down the left side because that sounds, honestly, just a lot more interesting. So then, the weak-minded, let's begin. Now, with the Nurax Worm, I normally go with this option here rather than Aquasite. The reason is this has a much better early game because planes are amazing at getting absolutely everywhere, whereas the boats are more important for getting to islands and all the hard to reach places. But since I don't know if the Nurax Worm is going to give us Trojan planes, I think it's best that we play it safe, go with Aquasite, and make sure that we plague the sea itself. So all the generic options here, that makes sense. Normal difficulty, and let us begin. The second coming, the parasite managed to infect one of the archaeologists. What route will it go down? Adapt or change the humans? We are going to adapt and become the ultimate killers. And we start off in Central Africa. Now, that's a bit of a problem. I was hoping we would start in West Africa or South Africa because ports. Starting somewhere with no ports at all can be really, really bad, because if you don't spread to other countries fast enough, and you infect this country to a severe enough degree, even if your severity is low, you're going to be found. Unless you have zero severity, but we can't do that normally with the Nurax Worm, because Nurax Worms have lots and lots of severity, so we really need land transmission. It also mentioned then, in one of the pop-ups, that we have weak water and air transmission anyway, so... That's a bit worrying. I assume it means boats and planes. So, transmission. Let's see what we have available to us. We have lava spawning. The parasite spawns lava, which can infect more people. We then have water one straight away. And that's the standard water text, I think. No, it's missing water transmission, or boat transmission, whichever it actually says. I can't quite remember, but I'm fairly certain the normal transmission tells you that it increases that particular type of infectivity. It's not saying it here. With Air 1, yet we have the same. Aha! And Detective Lathrix here. It's missing a full stop, which means this has been edited. So, I am assuming these two will not give us a better chance to get on planes or boats, so we need to get that from somewhere else. I think. Could be horribly wrong here. But for now, I'll pretend that I'm being smart. So we have blood. Gives lava the ability to spread through blood-to-blood -blood contact. Increases infectivity, especially in poor regions. We have urine. The lava is able to survive for elongated time periods inside the host's urine, which increases infectivity in poor regions. And then we have sweat. The lava can survive inside the host's sweat, increasing infectivity in cold climates and urban regions. Now that's really good. A little bit of cold resistance built into a transmission is really good since we are starting off in a hot country and only have heat resistance. Definitely going for that in the future. With symptoms, we have neural breach, which I believe is the standard neural breach, which is normally down here for the Neurax Worm. Then we have the left side and we have the right side. So with the left side, we have weakness. The host feels weakness as the parasite is taking part of their nutritional needs. Harder to cure. Then we have confusion. The parasite blocks a small number of neural messages passing through the neurons, making the host feel confused. 
harder to cure as well. Okay, so everything makes it harder to cure. I am okay with that. Abilities. We have standard drug resistance. Yes, indeed. We have standard cold resistance and standard heat resistance. We then have zoonotic shift. The ability for the lava to attach to animals. Oh. Now that's tempting, because if this gives us access to birds, then we can travel through the land borders a lot faster, which is really, really important, because we need to get to those ports as soon as possible. However, we do also have vehicles. The lava gains the ability to survive inside of vehicles. So what's more important to us? Cars or birds? Or tiny cars for birds. Anyway, the important thing is, we get land transmission, we're going with vehicles, most likely. No, Zoonotic Shifter. I don't know which one of these will give us what we want, that's the problem. Now, vehicles, I am 99% sure, will give us access to boats and planes, which we really, really need. Maybe it will even give us access to Trojan planes, which will be amazing. Zoonotic Shift, I'm hoping will give us birds, but I don't know. So, probably going with vehicles, because we really need that air and water transmission. Excavations in Central Africa. A team of archaeologists found skeletons of our ancient ancestors that lived 10,000 years ago. They think that their findings are going to help us understand our evolutionary roots much better. Or they're just going to doom humanity. I mean, one of the two. Okay, going with vehicles, and we do indeed have a new transmission tree, which is cars. The lava is able to survive inside of cars, increasing infectivity, especially in rich countries, and land transmission. Perfect. We chose correctly. Lathrix is a smarty face. I'm actually hoping that Central Africa doesn't get affected too fast. Infected, even. Okay, cars leads to nothing. So how do we get the rest of these? Is it through this, or perhaps... Maybe if we grab water, we get access to boats, and then if we grab air, we get access to planes. That would make logical sense, so I'm hoping that's correct. In which case, despite the fact air is better for where we are currently, I am going to go down the route of water, because we're most likely going to get to West Africa before we get to South Africa or Egypt, and that only has a regular water port. So... There we are, ships. The larvae is capable of surviving inside of ships, greatly increasing infectivity, especially in rich countries, and water transmission. May have added the word greatly there, just to make sure everyone understands how awesome that really is. So I assume then if I grab air, we'll get planes, but for now let's just grab ships. Lovely. Do we need any more severity? Uh, not really, we are getting a lot of DNA anyway, so that's okay. So the more severity we have, the more DNA we get from red bubbles, but it seems okay for now, and I would rather not be cured too quickly. So let's grab air, I suppose. Yep, which leads to planes, and then there is indeed a third option here, so maybe that's like the combo one. So for 14, allows the lava to survive inside of the planes environment, increases infectivity, especially in rich countries, and air transmission. Fantastic. Let's get on those planes, let's get on those boats, and let's get ourselves some resistance. Come on, there we go. Fantastic. So next, ooh, Vehicle Master. The lava is able to thrive in every vehicle, greatly increasing infectivity together with land, air, and water transmission. That is really, really nice. Loads of infectivity, a little bit of severity, but land, air, and water transmission is amazing. So I guess we should really get that first. It depends. If we get to many rich or cold countries first, I'll get some resistances. If not, then we'll go ahead and grab that. The Ancient Parasite, question mark. After further examinations of the parasite, scientists found out that it is an organism which infected our ancient ancestors, as they saw from the marks and the skeletons recently found in Central Africa. The disease might have gotten released by the excavations. Yep, maybe it did. Just a slight chance there. Ooh, and they have found patient zero. That's pretty darn bad. Mostly because they've already found them, so I think even if we kill them now, it's not going to help. Oh dear, we are going to be... Yeah, we, we are just going to be cured so, so fast. But don't worry, we are not just some parasite. Lovely, okay, now we're spreading quite nicely. Let's grab Vehicle Master, and then we'll grab some resistances. We need to spread very quickly. Lovely, lovely, lovely. 
cold one, cold two, then we'll grab drug resistance as soon as possible. Okay, that should be enough now to infect absolutely everywhere. Yep, yeah, that is a lot of places infected, including Russia, which is great because that has a boat leading straight to Greenland. Do I want to slow down the cure? It's not too bad right now, so I think I'll just leave it. Though saying that, some of our symptoms will slow down the cure. Though I don't want ports to be shut down. But since we have enough severity already, that's not too bad in terms of how much we're getting. If this was mega brutal, we may need more severity because as more people get infected, infected things cost a little bit more. In fact, a lot more. By the end, things cost, I think, four times as much. Either way, we need more DNA for that, but since we're not on Mega Brutal, that's not so much of a concern. So a more stealthy play is certainly something we can do. Come on, Russia. Hurry up. Placed on watch list. We're still okay. I think just leaving it as it is right now might be best. Oh, now we are being cured far faster. Come on, hurry up. I need to start killing people as fast as possible because the cure is speeding up. Just one person to Greenland, please. Don't make me risk it by making me kill people already. Thank you! We are in Greenland! Let the fun times begin. Weakness leading to headaches and dizziness. Headaches. The host has headaches as the parasite is taking more space inside of their head. Harder to cure. Dizziness. The host feels dizzy as the parasite is taking up more space inside of their head. Once again, harder to cure. Blurry vision. The host has blurry vision as the parasite grows and damages the visual neuroreceptors. Harder to cure. Wow, everything is harder to cure. I'm okay with that right now. Severe insomnia. The host goes days without sleeping. I understand you, bird. That's pretty much me at the moment, honestly. That's why my speech is kind of all over the place, honestly. Which makes shy attempts ah, of controlling them harder to cure. Migraines. The host feels intense pain behind their eyes and in his head due to the damage done by the parasite. Leading to blindness, insanity, and seizures. Let's go with the fun option of a little bit of insanity. Hard to cure can be lethal, and that's the failed attempts of controlling. Seizures. Due to severe damage done to the brain by the host, sorry, of the host, he has seizures, hard to cure, might be lethal, leading to brain hemorrhaging. The brain starts bleeding from multiple locations as the parasite has done too much damage to it. Hard to cure, very lethal. And let's grab blindness as well, which leads to coma. Once again, hard to cure and lethal. And finally, total brain death. Due to the really severe damage done to the host's brain, it fails to function, resulting in catastrophic brain death. Hard to cure once again. So... Everything apparently is harder to cure here, which is a bit of a weird choice, I have to admit. Also, if we look at the lovely image there in the bottom right, we can see that the parasite is considerably larger than it was original. I can imagine that causing problems. Original, originally, potato. Though I do most likely want to increase that infectivity a little bit just because of places like Greenland. We are very lethal, so don't want to kill them too fast. Have we infected every country? Yes, we have. Beautiful. Um, so, let's grab sweat to increase our infectivity in cold climates. There we are. I think this is going to be a... Ooh! Total brain death. Well, now we are very lethal. Apparently, we can't devolve anything. Oh, dear. Failure? Question mark? No, everyone's dying. It's perfect. It's wonderful. The world will soon be a peaceful place. The parasite failed to adapt the right way. What it actually did is to be so hostile to the human body that it actually killed it. But maybe it is able to kill the whole world with such deadly side effects. Yep, that's pretty much what's happening anyway. Oh dear, yep, everywhere is going down and Greenland is struggling actually. Um, so Greenland just counts as cold and nothing else. So what else do we want to grab? Honestly, that last mutation may have doomed us. <laughs> um... I'm guessing, honestly, just whatever has the most infectivity, so water, then air, which leads to extreme bioaerosol. Sure. Oh, that's going to be such a struggle. Please infect faster, Greenland! Don't do this to me, Greenland! No, Greenland, stop! Infect each other. For the greater good of the plague... 
We're getting so close, it's slightly increasing. Come on. No, stop with that. Brain atro- Okay, these I can devolve. They'll cost us. Uh, we'll just leave as it is then for now, I suppose. This is so annoying. How much for the next one? 29 for bodily fluids. <laughs> the larva is able to thrive inside of the bodily fluids of humans, increasing infectivity in both poor and rich countries, in both urban and cold. Oh, once again, cold! Oh, come on, stop dying! Well, die, but slower! You can do it, Greenland. I believe in you. It's like watching something try to load. No! Greenland! You bummed yourself and you won! Well, Greenland, you are just mean. I am unhappy with this. We're doing that again. And then, time travel to the future. Whoosh. And now in the future, we are once again infecting absolutely everywhere, but this time we are going down the right route. Memory deficiency and brain atrophy. The parasite, in order to grow, steals a small part of the brain's nutrient needs, slowly killing some neurons, harder to cure. And extended blocking of the neural messages makes the host store information poorly, harder to cure as well. So, let's leave them for a while, because we've learnt our lesson from last time. This time, we're just going to grab sweat. The mind control route. The parasite chose to try and make the humans dumber in order for it to control them once again. But will it succeed? Yes. Yes, it will. Hopefully. Next up, we have short-term memory loss. The parasite removes information from the prefrontal cortex of the brain, interfering with the short-term memory. Harder to cure. I wonder what we have next. Oh look, short-term memory loss. The parasite removes information from the prefrontal cortex of the brain, interfering with the short-term memory. Harder to cure. On do we have next? After that, we have cognitive deficiency and brain atrophy too. Okay, so making complex thoughts is more difficult. And of course, we are killing more neurons by stealing more of the food of the brain. So let's go with this. Much harder to cure. Cognitive deficiency too. Even further blocking of neural messages makes the host incapable of making complex or even simple thoughts. Leading to partial motor skills loss. Okay. This can be lethal, though. Wonder where the victory condition is. Oh, I was hoping it'd be right there, but sadly not. Okay, we have something else. Mind control 1. Not the victory condition, but this adds Trojan planes. Okay. Br brain atrophy 3. And once again, just stealing more of the brain's nutrients. This might be a bit difficult. I don't think we're going to have quite enough DNA for this. That's worrying. Extreme brain atrophy. The extended extreme lack of nutrients results in catastrophic atrophy, making parts of the brain much smaller. Lethal. Much harder to cure. Come on. After this, we must have the victory condition. There we are. The victory condition just got mutated all by itself. After the last time, us getting very unlucky with the mutations. Apparently this time it's been far kinder. Full mind control. The parasite fully controls the flow of messages through the host's brain. Might be lethal. Harder to cure. So now we just need to wait until everyone's infected and we should win via mind control. Shouldn't be too long. There's only 5,000 people still healthy. Join us! Yes, yes they do. There are no healthy people left in the world, which means... We have enslaved humanity as their new god and master. Humanity is entering a dark new future as a slave species. So, there we are. Victory through lovely random mutation. So then, what did I think about this plague? Honestly, I think it's pretty much rated perfectly. I would either rate this a very high three stars or a four stars. I did definitely enjoy it. And it's a slightly different take on the Nurax Worm while still keeping it pretty much the same sort of style, the same vein as the regular Nurax Worm. What I really enjoyed was the idea of splitting up the air transmission and the plane transmission so that you needed to infect vehicles separately rather than that simply being rolled into the regular air transmission. I think that was really interesting and definitely could be expanded upon. My only real negative, to be perfectly honest, in fact there's two negatives, but the main one is that there was a lack of choice with the symptoms. As soon as you go down either the left 
left route or the right route, you're kind of locked in and it's very linear. Normally you get to go around the symptom tree and choose different paths. With this, you're kind of stuck with either left or right. Still good, but maybe giving a few more options would be a little bit better. The second negative, and this is a very minor negative, is just almost every symptom was harder to cure. And that kind of made it lose the impact, because regardless where you choose, harder to cure is always going to be bundled in. And that isn't that interesting. So maybe some of the symptoms being more specifically harder to cure and then others not might be a bit better as well. But still, that being said, definitely enjoyed it. I would rate it four stars and I would definitely recommend it. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Plague Inc. Evolved is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And as always, if you have any particular plagues you would like to see me play, then please tell me in the comments below. And now, I'm probably going to try and get a nap because my speech has gone somewhere far, far away and I'm too tired to chase it. Thank you for watching and goodbye. That was a load of nonsense I just said.